I've been living fast, 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 fast. Feeling really bad, 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 bad. Juice World, more like Milk Dud. A lot of youth grew up listening to emo. I'm not surprised to see it gain attraction once someone made the genius idea of merging it with hip hop. Now we can get emotionally wounded and angsty venting over trap beats. I just didn't expect the Tom DeLong vocal twang to come along with it either. The human talk box, I like to call him. I also didn't expect the misogynistic attitude to be smuggled in with the wheelbarrow of borrowed ideas. But Juice World may be the most on the nose demonstration of what happens when men view women as ownership and continue to demonize them and deflect responsibility off themselves. Oh dear. Yeah, is that a soapbox that's just appeared under me? Your grief is not invalid, but your attitude is. For one, I genuinely enjoy Juice Fella's instrumentals. Somber and tear-coated they are, like a masochist's birthday cake. And even more outrageously, I enjoy Juice Bro's vocal work, or at least I did when the singles dropped. I think his whiny singing is perfect for songs like Robbery and Make Believe. He sounds like he's about to scream sing out of sheer catharsis like his fans tend to do. It's to the point where I love and I hate you, and I cannot change your soul. But over the course of this album, it's all there black and white clear as crystal. Juice Man sounds like he took the fizzy lifting drinks, bumping into the ceiling of my conscious, which now has to be washed. His vocal melodies are lazily written, and as much as he has game when it comes to writing anthemic hooks, it becomes increasingly clear that this is all he has to rely on, and this makes his Tom DeLonge song crooning become very annoying within the time span of three songs. With the whole streaming numbers trick aside, Juji Fruit didn't have the capacity in him to write 22 worthwhile songs. In fact, if I was being generous, only about 5 or 6 here are worth a second listen. On God featuring Young Thug is sincerely forgettable. Ring Ring samples your first guitar lesson where you learnt the four basic chords of any pop song, and yet Juice Master still can't stick to a vocal melody over it. And if Syphilis reveals anything, it's that he can indeed rap. But when he does, he's just boring. However, I think the most definable grievance with his grievances is that Juice McGee writes very bad lyrics. As in, harmful lyrics. I'm not convinced at all that he's a narrator that you're supposed to be critical of, or even one that's willing to grow as a person. You'd expect that a lot of his fans find his music relatable, which makes it worrisome when Robbery drops the line about flexing on a hoe every time they're insecure, or the one about threatening his girlfriend with suicide. Juice World could have the biggest musical appeal to me, and I'd still take a read through his lyrics and feel the same disdain that I do when I contract Ringworm. It's a 4 out of 10 from me, cuz. Anyways, can I talk about the new William Basinski album too? Because that was honestly more tiring than this. As as long as this was, this had a bit of style to it, it had a flair. Basinski spends the entirety of On Time Out of Time using a math equation to predict what sound a black hole would emit in order to demonstrate a love story between black holes themselves, and it's absolutely boring. You can pretend that any dissonant, vacuous smudge of faux emotive droning has a heart-tugging narrative. I just spent the last few minutes talking about it.